Yeah. Yes, it's on there. Yes. Okay, we're on, Jim. We'll bring the meeting to order. Uh, this is the Council Rules and Policy Committee. Um, people present, Judy Roy, Ed Belize, and myself, Jim Benedict. And today is May 15th. May 15th. I do. <laughs> that's why I turned this off. Well, I actually I sent it to her, but that's all right. Uh, we have a bunch of things for discussion. Whether we make any headway in them, we'll find out. Uh, discussion starting with policy regarding roadside memorials um, with Joe. The Giacomo leaving the police department retiring, I couldn't catch the police chief, um, so I have no input from him. I don't know if you do, Judy. No, the only thing that I had, um, he had talked to me briefly and just said that he was, you know, what I asked me what I thought about him contacting a couple of the families um, to talk about some alternative approaches to memorializing, and I, he hasn't gotten back to me, so... I think you have any input or anything to say to us that on the roadside memorials? Yes. No. Do you have any ideas for it? Well, I thought the last meeting we were going to have the police chief come in and give us. So I think that we should just. Yeah, and I think Jody was going to also look up some things from other communities or. Right, yeah. I think there's a number of things we can draw from when we have a better sense of, um, you know, where we want to land. I think we can, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. I do know the chief was reaching out to a couple of the families of the more recent events um, just to solicit some input um, as there seemed to be some interest by the committee to um, incorporate in the policy, uh, I guess, some, some sort of mechanism to transition from, a, you know, a memorial for some short period of time after an event occurs to, maybe something more lasting. Um, and getting input from families who have recently gone through it seems to make some sense. So uh, I, I'm quite sure by the time this committee convenes again, the chief will be in a position to give you some advice in that regard. I'd be interested in um, seeing how they've been handled, how they were handling it in Boston. Uh, that's, you know, those are, that's a pretty major one, but... Well, being, being originally from there, there was never, never any that were uh, implicated. Uh, I mean, I, you know, friends of mine that died through high school and then parents. But I mean, this is a more recent thing, though. I mean, it's more recent in the last four or five years, you know, where they're doing it, you know, internationally and nationally. Right. I mean, even even that uh, Ayla, that young little girl that went missing up in northern Maine. I mean, they still have teddy bears on the lawn. I think up there at that house. Mm -hmm. Some, something. I know in Boston, Boylston Street's back open. All the businesses are open, so there you know there can't be a, a large display of, of yeah. items. But yeah. um, we can check in to see if there's any lasting, uh, and there might be some things on the Boston website just to uh, what they'll do next. I think certainly we could probably um, toy with some time limit, you know, 30 days, 60 days. Uh, some, some time limit needs to be there as long as they understand that there's a time limit. And that, that during that time limit that uh, certainly we could be approaching them to find out what other kinds of things they, like, they might like to do as an alternative mm -hmm. and maybe have a list of alternative suggestions for them. 
and, and maybe do it as a policy and not an ordinance. Do it as a policy to start with and see how yeah. see how it goes with yeah. the policy because you can change a policy a lot faster. Yeah, and I think having some an ordinance. flexibility. That's what we're doing this way. Yeah. Having the policy recognizing the need of some flexibility, but I think setting some expectation of time limit, you know, depending on the unique circumstances yeah. of the event. Yeah. Um, uh, you may want to extend that, you know, slightly beyond, but um, we have a time frame we can point to and, and at least start the conversation. And, and, and that way, I mean, they can be, that gives the, at least the police department a mechanism whereby to approach them to yep. say, we understand that you're grieving and we, we understand that, but our policy is this and we'd like to help you memorialize this person um, in, a, in a more positive, permanent way. Uh, and you know, you offer them suggestions and things. So it, I think it, it it gives the police department something something concrete to to go from, rather than <coughs> just random See, what, approach. One of the things that I have problem getting my arms around is that a lot of these memorials are put up by friends of the victim, and and not the family. Mm -hmm. Oh, the fam absolutely. The family is not really even involved and. So um, I don't know how how a policy should be directed or to whom a policy should be directed. Well, I think it probably could be directed to both. Certainly, that you know the policy could contain language that, at the same time, families families will be contacted with, to offer suggestions and um, to assist in establishing mm -hmm. a more permanent memorial, which also might be healing for them. Yeah, because I think, I think it's got to be it's got to be hard on them every time they go by one of these sure. if they travel that way. I would imagine some families might even avoid traveling that route, right. you know, because it, it just brings back that that terrible memory every time. It seems to me if it's not a direct family member or a close friend, <coughs> they must be a very very close friend to you know put in that sort of sustained effort, and so the family would be a, presumably know who they are and be able to reach them. Uh, so I think the family would continue to be, and above all, we need to respect yeah. the direct family's wishes. Yeah. But lots of times the memorial is, uh, in a lot of cases, just a bouquet of flowers, or ten bouquets of flowers. Right. Well, another thing that, that I neglected to bring up before, and I don't know if anybody here is aware of it, um, and I know it from my relatives that are in the other side of the dirt, uh -huh. Funeral uh, graveyards have got rules on what can be put in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my mother happens to be in one, and she's there 48 years. It's the only place in the cemetery where you can't have permanent bushes, hosta, mm -hmm. little azaleas. Now, uh, for the fire people, they can have the stands and the glass stairs that have the little lights in them, and things like that. And service people can have certain metals. Um, and actually what they're starting to do, because they happen to be at my father-in-law's grave this week, Monday, and they just started it because this was just put up. He was also in the Navy. He died seven years ago. He's got this headstone there, as we were there yesterday, five feet down below his headstone is a stone. The brass, uh, brass plaque. It, yeah. Yeah, my grandfather had that. Is that right? Yeah. <clears throat> I had never seen that, then evidently the service paid for it. Yeah, yeah, they do. They're brass plaques. They're usually either set on a stone or my grandfather's is set in, actually in the dirt, and I need at some point in my life to put a stone there that they can put it in, but... Yeah, the but they do, they do have them, and the other thing with the, the stone, they usually leave alone if people leave a memorial. My children left a memorial on both of them, and that was allowed. But the bushes, I put in hosta because I didn't know, and I come back the next later on in the year, and they're all mowed down. Well, needless to say, I was not a very happy camper, yeah. <laughs> and I went in and got told uh, you don't 
do that here, and the reason is they're in the way of the lawnmowers, which doesn't even sound good because they also have a thing that you could put stuff six inches out in the width of the stone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the few the, the the graveyards again a yeah. uh, little uh <coughs> just save time with the lawnmower. Mm -hmm. Don't put it in the permanent bushes. And a lot of the cemeteries locally, the Calvary Cemetery, in the older section, you can they, they can plant things, but in the newer section of Calvary, you can't, and you've got to remove any planters that you put there. And yeah, no. the difference there is they oh. impose covenants. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you purchase the right, you buy the plot, and you buy the whatever covenants might come with that. Yeah. Um. But I think, you know, they're looking at, you know, I mean, the, the spot where the person was killed. But there are other things like, for example, Durant Drive that runs mm -hmm. through our park. Yeah. I mean, that for the uh, fire police person that was killed in at the line of duty, I mean, the street was named after him. So there are things like that and the benches and, you know, trees. A lot of trees have been planted in memory of uh, memory of folks. And, uh, Any other thoughts that I could list down? I mean, scholarship came to mind. Scholarship fund. Yeah. Run. Um, uh, some sort of annual event day. that would, you know, cost a reminder, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, well, that certainly gives me good and maybe food for the, thought. And maybe the D.A.R.E. program could you know, offer some suggestions, too. So I will plan on having Chief uh, or someone from the PD here to provide some further advice on what they've learned from their further research. Uh, and I'm fairly confident that we can come up with a policy that uh, provides some limitations, uh, but also some flexibility in the middle. Okay. Does the state have a policy? state of Maine does not. I believe we are, um, yes, states with no specific legislation, and Maine is one of six. But we can draw from the experiences in other states and other locales. So like uh, on the turnpike, do they have regulations there? I believe they do. I think they physically go in and remove things. Um, on occasion, you'll see things perhaps, uh, I don't know if they're technically out of the right of way or they're kind of up in the wood line. Um, not so much on, and I'm just speaking from my observ personal observ observation, not so much on um, the turnpike or 95, but some of the, the back roads. Um, I come from up north. The Haynesville Woods was legendary. There are many, many men die in building the Haynesville Woods. The lady in the white dress. Uh, and, and and many others died since then once it was built. It's a treacherous road and so there are dozens stop. of memorials along that stretch of 100 miles. The story is the truckers would stop and there'd be this lady in this white dress and they'd pick her up and she would ride with them until they were through the Haynesville Woods to Lincoln mm -hmm. and they were safe and then she would disappear. And they believed it, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Well, we'll, I guess we'll just leave it there. Okay. So, I, you know, just make a motion that the, the manager pull together a, a policy that um, addresses time limits and some alternative suggestions and approaches to family and and uh, friends. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Oh, and I do apologize to you, the public. In my greetings, I neglected, and I apologize to Mr. Tom Hall, our town manager, who also is here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, moving on. Discussions. In policy handout guide. I'm not, that was the language you provided, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure what you meant by that. Yes. We, we all okay. had an assignment language to review in. certain okay. sec which sections yep. and make suggestions. And I didn't do my homework last time, and I really haven't done a lot of good homework <laughs> at this time. But I just, as looking at it, just came up with something on page 10. Um, we had a recent issue about appointments to committees and boards. Yep. And this simply in 201.0 says appointments to town committees and boards that, that 
they must go through a two-meeting process where the names and individuals are posted at one council meeting and approved at the next council meeting, and the current members will serve until the replacement is named. It says nothing about how the appointments committee comes to the decision to post the names. Is that something that that needs to be in there? Um, that the committee um, reviews applications for various boards and committees, and um, the majority vote is taken, and that's the ones that are posted. We, we certainly could recite the practice. Yeah. Um, I don't know, uh, part of that, I don't that's know if you fair. want to insist on uh, interviews, if you will, yeah, meeting I mean, candidates. We used, to, we used to do interviews on planning board, uh, particularly planning board, because uh, it's a real, planning board is a very important board. Mm -hmm. And they they do a, a lot of a lot of things. So we, we used to do interviews on planning board members, and I believe in CBA as well. Maybe you I, when I applied to the planning board, Jeff Messer called me up one night and I had a conversation with him. That's how Jeff Messer operates. Mm -hmm. I, you per perhaps could have just um, acknowledged that interviews might be helpful, and, but leave it up to the discretion. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> some of the lesser committees, you may not need to, to do that. But uh, yeah, I think they still do on occasion, yeah, depending on, on the need. But I don't think we have for a while, but... Uh, no. well, in, in conjunction with that, and it, it actually is skipping to our next part of our agenda, is the length of time for committee appointments. Uh, there seems to be no specific end date and differences between, I think, what will have to be brought up in that timing is the, I guess I have to call them the major committees. For council standing, or for uh, council? Standing Committees. These are council, though. No. This, this is town committees and boards. I, I don't know what it means. So if you flip to page 12, section 203 starts with that yes. and moves yes. on to 204. But because page 10 is is other committees, isn't it? It's appointments from the appointments calendar. from the general public. And then, and there is time limits like 2022. And just let me say, this part was reworked heavily about three years ago as part of a comprehensive rewrite of this yeah. whole section. Um, so it, it begins with uh, the standing council committees, which there are four, this being one of them. And the thing we added most recently was fleshing out and giving each of these standing council committees you know, a more defined role, what they do. Uh, it was never really written down, and so things would change year to year depending on who was on those committees. So if you flip the page, um, really picking up uh, on page 13, section 204.0, other committees and boards, it further differentiates the other types of committees and boards that, that you have. Yeah. So the first group is the special committees or boards. So those are created by council and for which serve a pur specific purpose for an indefinite period. And examples would be conservation, planning, shellfish. These, what differentiates this group is these are statutorily required. The town must have these. And then the other group, and this might be what you're getting to, Mr. Chairman, it's the ad hoc committees. And these are appointed for a specific purpose Perfect. and or for a specific duration of time. Now, the word ad hoc has a legal definition, and my understanding of that is an ad hoc committee serves until their charge is completed. Uh, so, for instance, if you have... Or you can do a specified time, you might say. Right. And it, that by, uh, by July of uh, 2014, this ad hoc committee will, have, will bring its recommendations. Most recently, council. maybe last month, this council created the historic preservation something or other. And in that case, uh, there is a specific one-year time frame right. for that committee to exist. So unless it's defined in the document that creates them in the first place, um, an ad hoc would serve until their charge is completed, and that might be difficult to determine on occasion. 
Uh, and in other cases, they serve indefinitely yeah. until you do something to either the, ener the energy committee had, we were an ad hoc energy committee and we had one year. And it was converted and, since. And then, and we came up with recommendations and one of the recommendations to was, was to establish the energy committee as a permanent ongoing committee. And so, the I, can see, I can see that, but I guess, I guess what I'm getting at is on the ad hoc, I think at the end of uh, a maximum of a year, the, the council should go through what they what they were supposed to do, what they did, was it successful, not successful, necessary, unnecessary, and then it can be reviewed, not necessarily disbanded, but at the end of a year, mm -hmm. they get a the job description and to be, I guess you want to call it. If you allow me just to distribute this, this was the other component of the rewrite of Chapter 302, that's 302A, and what we did is pulled all of the committees that appeared all sorts of places through the code, and we put them all in one spot. And, and made them consistent. Made them format. consistent, and so if you just look to the first couple of pages, um, the intent of this was to standardize the process, and there were a couple of important elements. There was concern that that committees were kind of functioning on their own, and the council didn't know what was going on. Um, so this requires them to have agendas. It requires them to produce minutes. Uh, it requires them to produce annual reports to the council. And that might be where the council can evaluate the work and the effectiveness of committees. Um, each committee is required to provide an annual report at this point. It is <clears throat> each committee is required to provide an annual report to council, and that's on page two. And um, it doesn't specify the annual report. It means June, by June 30th. Should, should it say by June 30th? Perhaps it could. Just Probably our fiscal point. year. Yep. We might want we might want to make sh make that a, a totally so that we're looking for it by the end of June, and then um, we could then as a committee look at each committee and their annual report and see if they're still performing, and then make recommendations. The only thing I would suggest is perhaps to make it if you're looking for a deadline is to make it December 30th, uh, because often these reports make their way into our town report. Yeah. And, and, and that's our and that's our timeline. And for generally that. the reappointment is in January. Tody sends out letters when people right. a term three year term is up. She sends out the letters um, in January and asking them if they want to continue on the committee or not. And uh, so that's done in January. So maybe we can make them do by December 1st or December 15th or something like, yeah. like that so you have them in some time to review before so, you're yeah. Reappointing so they all come in at a, at a specific time period, so then they can look, be looked at. Is the committee performing? Is the committee doing what their charge is? And if they're not, then getting them on task. And if they, if there are other charges that perhaps council might want to give them, yeah. we could add them. I can tell you, some of the committees, it's hard. I mean, these are volunteers. These are citizens volunteering their time. Uh, some do better than others in terms of consistency and producing minutes. Someone, you know, someone on that committee has to do that. For those committees that we provide staff support to, um, that's done regularly because staff, you know, uh, ensures it. I can't. It, it's difficult with all of them because they're citizen volunteers. I'm just wondering if, we, if in the in the rules and policies book on 2042 with ad hoc committees, uh, I I'd, I'd almost like to say for a specific purpose and a specific duration. I think that's right. You know, not and that's or. Right. I because we sometimes get ad hoc committees and we don't follow them. So I think Generally, when we do an ad hoc committee, we're looking at a time period. We're looking for some work to be done to proceed, you know, a project. 
So I, um, I'm, I'm just wondering procedurally how you do that. You can certainly add that clarification in the, here to a 4.2. Need to be an amendment. You may need to go back to because each of these committees has uh, an enabling legislation. You created or past councils created them at one point in time. Um, and if you're going to specify a duration, it would be in that enabling legislation that would be appropriate. So we could provide to you at your next meeting all of that enabling information. A fair amount of it is what I just provided you. Uh, there's a couple of errant. Yeah, but there aren't any ad hoc committees in here. These are all pretty much the standing, the standing committees. Yeah. So that's, that's well, other than fair. the council yeah. committees. So it's the it's the yeah, yeah, because this one's really been was just done in. 2012. I, I think you know we can add some language, perhaps in 2042. Okay. Just think about uh, removing the and or and just saying and. Yeah. The, the other part of this effort, and Judy will recall this, is four or five or six committees were disbanded yep. because they realized that either we didn't have enough people for <coughs> to operate were, or it was not necessary anymore. Yeah. They were. They, they weren't really and serving the the purpose for which they were intended. As I recall, that was the real motivation for even digging into this, which was, you know, we've got all these committees that don't even meet, so why have them? So. And everybody had a different format, so now it's all the same format. It's the same all the time. It, you know, it looks it's yep. cleaner, certainly. And then you've got some errant ones. The one that comes to mind uh, is the Pest Management Advisory Committee that was created in the context of, of, your, of the policy that governs that, uh, the organics policy, a portion of that overall policy w is the committee. Um, that's not to say you can't go in and you know, reach in and change that little portion of the policy and create a, a duration in that, in that respect. And no, are they in that arc? That would go to ordinance. I would, personally, I'd characterize them as standing because so long as the policy is in place, that committee exists, unless you change the policy, of course. Oh, slipping in. No. <laughs> no, you were gimping in. I was <laughs> gimping in. <laughs> Too much Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> Channel 8, Channel 8 still out there? Is Channel 8 still out there? What were they out there for? They were, they've been here for about four hours this afternoon. I, I think they're waiting to do a live broadcast. Mm -hmm. I presume it has to do with the school validation vote. I don't know. Okay. So. I think the only other one that I, I looked at is uh, we had an issue at one point. It's not anymore, but we put time limits on how long the public could speak. And one of our questions was, and that's on page 11, was whether or not we wanted to put a timeline on, timeline on how much a counselor could speak. Because we had a counselor at one point who uh, went on for like 45 or 50 minutes. <coughs> I don't, I don't know if Ron accuses me of talking too much, but uh, I certainly don't go that long. But that was, that was, I just wrote that note down just thinking, you know, we haven't had the problem of late, so I don't see the need for it now. But, yeah. but yeah, it's, not the it's worst thing kind yet. of filibustering. They were no, but, the, but they, the, the chairman should be able to control that, I would think. Well, it was, the chairman was the chairman. Was doing the filibuster. <laughs> he had the gavel in, is that yeah, right? Oh, oh, he had the I gavel gotcha. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, in yeah. my experience, those things have a way of working themselves out. Either yeah. they're yeah. not, they don't occur very often, and someone <laughs> can really outstay their welcome if they yeah. filibuster. Uh, well, why don't we do this for now, uh, unless you have another idea. Take this adoption of 2012, and go through it, circle what do you think needs help, uh, and or but for nor, and we'll bring it up next. What about, you, know, you don't want to do any more with this, the rules and policies itself. They're two different documents now. Well, this is A, so it's related. It's 302A, but yeah. I understand yeah. your point. It, yeah. We'll all have to do our homework now.
<laughs> I, I hope you'll find that 302A in fairly good shape because we, yeah. we it should be. looked at it pretty thoroughly recently. But you might catch something for sure. So. I'm too tired. But should should we have <coughs> should we be reviewing all of the quote unquote ad hoc committee? This doesn't this is not the ad hoc committee. No. Maybe Tom could pull together a list of what Yeah, we, there's not what many. We, what we currently have for ad hoc committees just so we yeah, can Yeah, why don't we do we that? There's not many. Yeah. But I, I, and I if we really cleaned them up quite a bit when we rewrote this 302A, we, 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 we really called them, but we do keep adding them, and so let's take a look at which ones we still have right now. Right. Yeah, and how they were set up. Yeah. Yeah. Were they set up for a specific purpose? Yeah. Was, was right. there a yeah. time limit there? What I'll do then is I'll provide you all committees that don't exist in this document, which would be ad hoc and maybe some strays. Okay. Um, and then one thing you could do is to kind of assign what are, what type of committee are they? Should they be standing or ad hoc? And then you can talk about duration. If yeah. you could put in in, the, in, the, in there also in whichever one belongs, uh, the meaning of sunset. The meaning of what it um, what it's sister to. Because I had never heard of it until I got it from Judy two or three weeks ago. Sunset clause. Yeah, and that's why I was so surprised. And generally, a sunset clause is one year from the date in which you establish something that there'll be a sunset clause. That, you know, unless you specify unless something else. Unless you specify else. otherwise, yeah. it usually it usually is referring to one year. Um, I'll do a little research if you're interested in in the term ad hoc. I think that is a. I believe at one time term. we had a sunset clause in Higgins Beach parking. I hope we remove that. <laughs> I think we did. I think the committee think disbanded did. because it yeah. did sunset. Yeah, I think it did. So I'll provide a, a list of and, and the pertinent information for each of the committees or boards that aren't contained within this document. Are you, are you going to include how they were established? Yes, I'll provide, I call it the enabling legislation, right. but there was a council action that created them in the first instance. Good. Good. Excellent. Yeah. What else is on the agenda? Anticipation that the uh, budget will be the most important, I assume, coming up. Do we want? Do we want to have a, uh, a meeting in the month, or skip it and skip the meeting until we go for six weeks? Because we have quite a bit of individual work to do. Well, there will have to be some action by the fifth. Because they've got well, actually, even before that, no, they have to. They have ten days to address the um, the budget. Yeah, the budget. Uh, the law. Ten days to set a next uh, validation vote. No, uh, the next validation vote must be no sooner than ten days from yesterday, and no more than forty-five days. Oh, okay. So there's a you know a, a fair window, if you will. But if the next one doesn't get passed, then it goes back yeah. to your. Budget on July. July that's first. June that's the curious question. Um, I think the school budget actually is until they've accept, adopted a budget by voter v validation. It is uh, last year's budget, the last validated okay. budget okay. for school. I can't ask the question because on the town side. Didn't uh, Bitterford? Didn't they have like three or four Soccer votes? Soccer Bedford went way into August, as I recall, yeah. last summer. Yeah. I think they did. Yeah, you're right. I thought you had said something about 
the beginning of July that it went back. So that's true. Back of, to your budget. That, that's what the charter says. But then there's a state law that sits on top regarding the state validation process, and that's very clear that at least the school budget portion of the town budget reverts back to the last validated budget, which would be the current fiscal year. If Ron did not ask you, may I ask you during the meeting this evening mm -hmm. to bring that definition sure. up, or, or Judy, and, and anybody smiler at that than I am as far as the time limits? Sure. I, yeah, so. I think I think there ought to be a not a discussion, but a, a statement as to what the process. What happens if? What's the process now? Yeah. Now that it's been turned down. Sure. What's the um, process? I, I was prepared to speak to that, so yeah. please do. So, so the so public should know that. So the next meeting of this committee, we have two council meetings in June, the fifth and the nineteenth. It's easier on you, is, is it not, if we have it before the council meeting on that same night? It makes it easier yeah, on you. Yeah. Day before the day after, but it's busy. But it does make for a long evening for everyone involved, but it's not a second night out. You want to go the 5th or the 19th? Well, well let's ask this. Uh, is the next meeting going to be very time consuming? because of what's being dealt with with the budget. I don't want to make people be here five hours. The most time consuming part I would predict would be public comment depending on how things you know, kind of shake out. Um, that's just the unpredictable piece. The, the budget piece is likely to be fairly yeah, simple and straightforward. Does the council vote on the amended budget, school budget? Yes, it's the council that needs to put Make forward a revised budget. It's yeah. your decision, just like the first time was. Yep. So do we want to say, wait and set a date until after the first meeting in June? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Think so. Yeah. Right. It well, seems to me nothing on your agenda for this committee is you know, terribly pressing in terms of time. Right, we're going to lose the 19th. We do need to have a Right. Yeah. The 19th? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so June 19 at 6 p.m.? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any other business to be brought up in front of us? Nope. Any? Nope. Motion to adjourn. Second. Um. All opposed. All in favor. Okay, thank you. Hold your comments till I'm sure that the thing was in.